I came across an interesting subject the other day. It's called ethnomathematics. Ethnomathematics. You'll find it written about in a book called Ethnomathematics, Challenging Eurocentrism in the Mathematics Education, Sunny Press by Arthur Powell and Marilyn Frankenstein. Um, these are um, books which now are written in order to impress upon us the importance of viewing maths in a completely different way. It says here, for example, that ethnomathematics, like many of the specialised terms in critical social justice, is, uh, is a subject which refers to an approach that sees mathematics ultimately as a cultural artefact, that it's contingent to the culture in which it is applied, and mathematics is therefore not universal. It says that its primary goal is to point out that the assumed universality of mathematics is merely a Eurocentric assumption which needs to be disrupted and decolonized. And it goes on to say that ethnomathematics is therefore an activist approach consonant with the broad project of critical theory, which is to undermine the hegemony of Western culture, often by critiquing it ruthlessly while comparing it against heavily whitewashed alternatives, especially indigenous mathematics. One last thing it says about it, just to give you the clearer idea of what it's about. Ethnomathematics therefore attempts to introduce scepticism around the ideas like that getting the right answer is important in mathematics, or that there is one right answer. A specific example of the battleground that ethnomathematics has waged in this regard is over the question of what 2 plus 2 equals. The position in ethnomathematics is that 4 is one possible answer amongst many, that is favoured by hegemonic white western euro centric white supremacist etc power dynamics and thus it should be held in skepticism it insists that thinking about other values they could take is a useful exercise in mathematical education and it has explicitly taken up a long-running project to find ways to make two plus two equal five a true statement. I won't read any more about the nature of ethnomathematics, but I think it's worth a few comments about that. And I think that basically what you have at root here is a system whereby there is no truth, there is no absolute truth, and therefore there is nothing that we can agree on, and therefore it makes consequent sense that if you don't believe in truth, then why should 2 plus 2 equal 4? Or why should 2 plus 2 not equal 5 any more than it equals 4? Because there is no absolute truth. That way you can decide anything for yourself or for anybody else, and you can make up your own world and determine your own world and forge it after your own image. Because after all, there is no true world out there to conform to. 2 plus 2 equals 5 is just as valid as 2 plus 2 equals 4, if for you, you prefer to believe that 2 plus 2 equals 5. What's the consequence of this? Well, I think the first consequence has to be that what this leads to is a total breakdown of communication. Because once we abandon the idea of absolute truth, and once we abandon the idea that 2 plus 2 equals 4, and you can have 2 plus 2 equals 5, 6, 7, or any number you like, then we're no longer speaking the same language. We no longer have things in common. We no longer are able to compare notes with each other and, and progress and move on and, and build upon what we know, because there is nothing left to build upon. It also means, secondly, that there is no such thing as science and therefore no such thing as progress either. 
that all the ideas of um, Isaac Newton and his theories of dynamics or the theories of Einstein or the theories of quantum mechanics or the things which have brought us together and given us the progress of this uh, we have in our own society all of that should be laid to one side because there are different mechanics different processes different peoples different views which are all equally as valid and none of them can claim, can claim supremacy over anybody else and once you have that kind of situation where all truths are cast to one side in the favor of my truth as opposed to your truth then what that leads to thirdly or finally is the idea that all that we have between us anymore without being able to talk to each other properly is an idea of competition that i can express my truth more powerfully and more forcefully than you can express your truth and that leads us into the realm of power and domination and control and it's a it's a route which takes us away from civilization it takes us away from the knowledge that we used to have to be able to build things and to talk to one another and share basic fundamental truths it takes us into a realm of well what ultimately i suppose is the ending of a civilization and the end of that road is just as uh, T.S. Eliot puts it, a handful of dust. That's all that we have left. In those societies where two plus two equals five, you can no longer build an aeroplane that flies. You can no longer build a computer that can uh, work properly. You can't even build um, anything that, that will take you from one place to another in in the society that we live in. No motor cars, no trains, nothing of any progress at all can be made in a society where two plus two equals five not only do you abandon truth not only do you abandon reason not only do you abandon your uh, uh, progress but you abandon ultimately all rationality all sensibility and you even abandon your own sanity